Today we're uncovering some hidden treasure of the Essential Graphics Panel. The Essential Graphics Panel can be used for a number of different things. You probably think of it most as a Mogurt generator because you can export the different assets that you have loaded into your Essential Graphics Panel into a Mogurt, which then can be edited by an editor within Premiere. Today, I wanna to talk to you about how we can use it between comps to help generate some randomization. We're gonna take a single line of text and we want the stroke text to appear throughout that line of text randomly. So we're gonna take that single line and duplicate it a number of times to fill a screen. So we have a block of text and we, we don't want the stroke to appear in the same exact place across our block text. So we're gonna use the power of a central graphics panel to help us randomize where that stroke lands in the block of text. If you're here because you wanna learn more about sports motion design, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified with each new tutorial. All right, let's dive in. So right now I have baller effects and then you'll see one that is stroked. So what I want to happen is to have the stroke randomize throughout this line. And right now, the way I have this rigged up, you can see I have this in my essential graphics panel. I, have, I call it random. So if I hit my controller here and hit E, I have offset and random. Offset is used to offset between each uh, text layer here. So if I increase that to say like 150, it's gonna spread the text out. Obviously not what I want, let's undo that. So the one I'm gonna focus on here is this random. And I selected this and elevated into the central graphics panel for this comp, the name base first name. And it has a number of two. So if I were to scrub through this, if I just go through, you can see it selecting different ones and changing it to stroke instead of fill. So let me put this back to two. So let's talk through how I did this. First, I do want to point out, you can see how I have these named. So I'm going to use the number after the name to trigger the opacity on the fill or the to make it either fill or stroke based on this number here. So that'll make more sense once we talk through it. I just want to call this out so you, you can recognize this. What I did is I created a text layer and called it first name one. And then when you duplicate, it automatically increments the number until you get to where you want to go. So setting one up first and then duplicating it is the best way to make this easy so you don't have to keep updating. You don't have to go into each name and update it. In order to get the uh, the stroke or the fill, I actually use text effectors. So I'm gonna be on this one here. Let's go ahead and add a fill color. And I'm gonna use the opacity here. So the fill color on a text effector is automatically gonna pull from what you have selected over here, unless you go in here and change the RGB. So I don't wanna change the RGB, I have the pink that I want. I'm gonna adjust the opacity. So let's select that. So fill opacity, if I take this down to zero, you're gonna see it automatically defaults to the stroke. So since I have both of these turned on, I don't want the stroke to be active if the fill is active. So we'll solve for that in just a minute. So let's take this back up to 100. And with my range selector, I actually don't want to touch anything. The defaults are exactly what I want. See, if I were to take that down a little bit, some of it would be filled and the other stroke. And that's not what I want. I want it to be all or nothing for this. So I'm leaving everything as is, and I'm gonna all click on the fill expression to add my expression on the fill. So first, I'm gonna start with a posterized time and set that to two. And posterized time needs to be the very top of your expression layer. So by using a posterized time of two, it is going to grab a random frame twice a second. All right, and then we're gonna add, we're gonna create our own variable here and call it opac for opacity. 
And I want to pick with this opacity up to my random. So let's select this controller here. And I'm going to lock this so that I can easily access it. So let's pick whip up, pick whip up to the random slider. And if, remember, that's the one that's in the essential graphics panel. So we're pick whipping to the one that's going to get updated. And then I want to add another variable and call this one text one. And this is where I'm going to call out the layer name number and use that to drive whether my opacity on my fill is on or off. So I'm going to write this layer dot name. And then I want to split this in order to call out the number here. So I have basically two variables. And the way that I can split this with two variables is by using the split function and then adding quotes here with a space between. So it's saying I want to split at the space. So I have first name, space, one. So it's going to give me two parts that I can call out. But everything starts at zero here. So I want to call out the second term. So we put this in brackets. But the second term is one. So first name equals zero. And the number is one. So let's put in one. And then we can add our semicolon. And then I want to say if the opacity, the random slider equals, which is two equal signs, if it equals the number at the end of first name, I want it to be zero. Those are curly brackets right above the apostrophe. Else, 100%. So I'm saying if this random number is the same as this number over here, I want it to be zero because I want it to be stroked. I don't want it to be filled. So it's going to all be filled except for the, the outlier here that's going to be stroked, which will be driven by this random number. So when I click off, it's going to be 100%. If I change this to 1, you can see it's stroked and the opacity is 0. So let's put this back to 2, 100%. Perfect, that's working. So now what I want to do is turn off the stroke when fill opacity is 100%. So that's going to be a little bit easier. So let's go up here to stroke color. And again, we're going to select opacity. We're not changing the color. And I can rename these. So let's call this fill opacity. And we can call this stroke opacity. And this one's going to be a little bit easier because we already wrote everything for fill opacity. So what we want to do is just pick whip here and call this var fill opacity. Okay, make that a term. So we're going to create another conditional statement. So we're saying if fill opacity equals zero, we want this layer, the, we want the stroke to be 100%. Otherwise, we want it to be zero. So when I click off, it should change to zero. Great. Now, when I change this random number to one, you can see they flip-flopped. So this is exactly what we want. And if I zoom out here. So if I go two, great. So this is doing exactly what we want. So let's recap real quick, and then we'll go to the main comp here. So for fill opacity, we want the fill to always be on unless this random number is telling us that it should be stroked. 
So fill opacity we set to always be on unless this random number equals this number next to first name, in which case it should be zero. So again, let me change this to one. So it switches to zero. And then we're just tying the stroke opacity and saying, take the inverse of fill opacity. So if it's zero, we want to be 100. If fill opacity is 100, we want the stroke to be zero. So that one's pretty straightforward. All right. So now that we have this set up, and we have, if I hit E, you always have to add assets to the central graphics panel from the timeline here. You can't add it from the effects controls. So once you uh, take the slider and put it up here in the central graphics panel, it's going to be available to you in your master comp. So let's go to that master comp now. If I hit tab to go back, name, repeat, first name. So what I did was I took my primary comp here, this top one, and I duplicated it 26 times and rotated it. So everything is just offset here. And when I open up name base two, when I open up the essential properties, we have a random number that we had put into the essential graphics panel available down here. So what I did is I put an expression on this random number so that th they all weren't the same. So you can see that says three, this one says 10, this one says five, this one says 14. I'm taking the slider that we input into here and then I'm putting an expression on on it to randomize it so that it everything is not consistent along here, which is exactly what we want. So let's talk through what we did with that. All right, so let's go ahead and alt click on the random essential property that we had uploaded into the central graphic panel in the last comp. It appears as part of the pre-comp here under essential properties. And I want to again add a posterized time of two. And I'm going to create a variable. Again, I want to keep it consistent. So I'm calling it opac. And then I'm going to say random. If I spell that right. Random. One comma 20. Add my semicolon. And I want to return the opacity. Okay, so it's giving me. 10.28. And where I got these numbers from, uh, random from 1 to 20. So if I open this comp, I can actually go to 22. So I can go 1 to 22. And I'm just, it's just the sheer number of text layers that I have in this comp. So if I only went to 10, I'd only need to, I'd want to randomize this from 1 to 10. So 1 to 22, great. And then you can see that this number is in between, and that's not what I want. So I also added a math.round, and I have to delete this one parenthesis to encapsulate this whole thing. So I'll add that back, and then it turns green. So I want to take the random number of 1 to 22 and then round it to the nearest number. So 11.26 is going to turn into 11 when I click off. All right. And once you do that with one, you can right click, copy expression only, and add it to the rest. And it's automatically going to randomize without you having to go in and change each number every single time, or you to go in and change the expression. So once you set it up once, copy it, go into each essential properties and you can paste uh, command V control V and you're going to get a random number. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and watch what that looks like. And now you can see we have the randomized look all driven from one single line of, of text 
but all the layers are not lining up or falling exactly the same. And that was my goal for this. So I hope you find new ways to use the Essential Graphics panel to help drive some new cool ideas for how you execute in your next project.